Hello. <laughs> hey, how are you? <laughs> Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We are live at the B2B Marketing Exchange here in beautiful Scottsdale, Arizona. Very I'm cold. Brian Anderson, news editor at Demand Gen Report. I'm Claudia Tirico, features editor at Demand Gen Report. And there has been a lot of talk today around a variety of different topics. Uh, all yes. still around the, the theme of getting to the person behind the brand yes. and having those personalized conversations with them. Yeah, speaking of conversations, <laughs> we actually had a great CMO panel uh, this morning featuring some really big names in B2B. We had Christine Nurnberger from Bottom Line Technologies, Ken Winko of Workwave, and Gene Hopkins of Ipswich. The session was uh, moderated by Jeff Pedowitz from the Pedowitz Group, and we really got a lot of insight into the minds of today's B2B CMOs. Um, three takeaways from that. I have them written down, so bear with me as I read off my paper. She has good handwriting. <laughs> nice handwriting. Hello. Okay. CMOs are now currently looking to do more with less. Uh, I feel like we could all relate to that. Yeah, you know? it seems like everybody has that issue. I want a bigger wardrobe with that costs less money. Yeah, and I just want to <laughs> stay in bed all day and not do anything, but that's just not how it works. <laughs> well, okay, beyond that, um, CMOs are also looking to drive revenue and ROI through contextual interactions. On top of that, they want to leverage digitalization. Wow, I got that right. Okay. Yeah, yeah, At scale fine. with personalization, which is a hot topic today, mm -hmm. and of, of course, the human element. Yeah, and definitely it's, it, the, the personalization aspect of it is coming from that uh, rise of immediacy that's coming from uh, B2B buyers today. Jeff Marcoux uh, from T-Tech had a great keynote uh, this morning talking about this new culture of immediacy. Every business decision maker wants it now. It's carrying over from their personal lives, um, much like with the expectations of immediacy from uh, Uber or whether it's um, Grubhub, you name it, that type right. of immediate type of customer service mm, and well. satisfaction, that mm, sort of thing. Hub. Mm. Are I you could, hungry? Yeah, I'm pretty hungry. I could eat. I could eat some food, too. All right, well, we'll eat in a minute. Anyway, they were talking about, <laughs> they were talking about how uh, there was four key elements to that type of personalization. He brought up the idea around data. Obviously, everything's kind of fueled by that data. There's also the strategy behind it. You need to be able to understand what you're collecting and what you're analyzing. You don't want to be putting all of your eggs into one specific basket. Right. And you want to understand what you're um, measuring. And then the tactics, the execution behind it. What are you doing with that data and how are you making it work for you? And then ultimately the sales and the customer experience aspect of it. Sales has to be an extension of marketing and have those types of conversations. It has to be consistent throughout uh, the entire customer journey. So how is sales going to leverage that insight, leverage everything that marketing is doing to get the job done and close deals? Awesome. And you can't really close any deals without really good content, right? True. Content is my favorite thing to talk about. Content's and fun. I was lucky enough to spend the whole day in our content to conversion track, which if you haven't, you don't know, um, content to conversion was the founding track of this entire conference. So it's kind of a big deal. It's where it all started. Yeah, content's a big deal. But um, one session that really stood out to me was a panel on the Netflix effect on B2B buyer engagement. I love Netflix. Yeah. I watch it a lot. Relatable. What's your favorite show? Uh, Black Mirror right now. Mm, that's so depressing to me. I like Stranger Things, obviously. Like, who doesn't like Stranger that's Things? Sad that's kind of weird. Don't it's judge. It's not that sad. Whatever. All right, I don't want to. I, I was going to say something, but I don't want to, like, give away any spoilers <laughs> in case somebody hasn't seen Stranger Things, which, go see Stranger Things. Okay, anyway, but so the session was a panel um, moderated by Mark Bornstein of On24. Mm -hmm. We had Lisa Kenny of Blackbaud, okay. which just so happened to be a KCA winner yeah. today. We'll talk but about we'll that get later. to that later. And Nick Mann from Red Hat. So because of Netflix, B2B buyers are used to that kind of relevant content. You know, Netflix, you know, mm -hmm. gives you the opportunity to binge yes. and recommends movies and TV shows and comedy skits or whatever based on whatever you've watched them before. Basically so. analyzes everything you do. Yeah, basically knows your entire life. Probably also knows what kind of, I don't know, chips you eat while you're binging. A little creepy. A little creepy. He has <laughs> creepy down yeah, I, I just, yeah, yeah, it's just <laughs> one of the big things because that's one of the main takeaways from it all. Yeah, that's true. But what's really what was really interesting is that Blackbaud kind of 
they're really big on web they're big on webinars yeah. and they actually cut webinars down into like bite sized snippets that are snackable and bite sized like a yeah. Halloween snicker bar that you would get as yeah. a kid. Millennials don't really have time to sit sixty minutes in a webinar nowadays. Exactly. Or read a 35 page white paper yeah, you know I don't, no, no, I don't got time for that so yeah so cut them cut webinars down you know you have them that's one piece of content then you could cut them down into tiny snippets throw them on social it's all about content repurposing there's so much content out there that you don't necessarily have to create new things if there's something out there something you already have revamp it in a way that is new and you know, just yeah. As long as it's relevant and contextual to your audience, it, right. it, there is no need to keep on recreating the wheel. And I think that's a pretty interesting way to go about maximizing the life of your content. Anyway, it's like using all the pieces of the buffalo as you will. Right. Right. Exactly. And another thing that could be related to Netflix is that you know Netflix is a hub of all things. You know, all different types of content, mm -hmm. TV shows, movies. Um, so why not create a hub of content for your buyers? Yeah, just that one location, everything's there. Yeah, so it's kind of like a Netflix type resource center. You know, you create these portals and everything is right there and easy to find and just easy to digest. Yeah, there's a lot of industry practitioners that are going above and beyond with their content, doing a lot of this type of stuff that we had our Killer Content Award luncheon uh, this afternoon where yeah. we honored roughly 30 uh, innovators in the space uh, when it comes to the types of content they're crea creating and how they are engaging their target audience uh, across 14 different categories, everything from influencer marketing to interactive content to the bundled content that we were talking about. And it's just right. great to see how they're leveraging all of these different types of tactics, this different type of data, uh, this different type of um, New tips and tactics for formats as well to properly yeah. like to to get behind uh, to get into the minds of their audience, get right. of those target accounts to those people, and that's kind of where the whole entire theme fits. It's, you you want to be talking to that in, that person that's behind the brand. Yeah, and speaking of interactive content that you mentioned, um, I actually just got out of another session featuring Katie Bunn of Paycor. Fun fact, Paycor was actually one of our interactive content Finney winners mm -hmm. last year. So we had them back to kind of, you know, they know what they're doing clearly. So mm -hmm. she was, she came back and, you know, it's really about creating content that talks to people. Big theme for B2BMX, probably the theme of B2BMX. Yeah. Um, our attention spans are super low. Like, we're like yep. goldfish, I swear. We're yep. eight seconds and you can't really do that with like I said, a 30 page white paper or anything like that. So right. interactive content, I love interactive content. It's really fun. Um, it really, you know, gets the buyer engaged. And I feel like there's also some solutions that actually let you track like w their whole journey throughout, yep. you know, the interactive experience. And it's whether in, it's yeah, there's a lot of creative ways and that's kind of how we're going to be closing out the event. We're, we're going to be talking a lot about creativity's right. role in having these engaging conversations with your buyers. We have uh, James Taylor from the C-School. He's a, a keynote speaker. He's an industry author. He's been covering the space for years. Yeah. He's going to be sharing some tips and tricks to, you know, not get too afraid of all the big, scary tech disruptors that are happening in the space, like AI, machine learning, right. automation as a whole, and how to basically go back to your roots, focus on that creative element, and how that is what's going to be the competitive differentiator. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. We yeah. actually, James Taylor kind of, we actually had like a conference call with him during our, our company meeting yeah. late last year, and he, he has some really cool things to say. Yeah. It's going to be a really great session. Yeah. So we look I'm forward, to, forward to it. Yeah. We're going to cover it on DGR too. So, yeah. make so sure keep you... an eye out for that. Yeah. And we're going to, um, there's a lot of other news and a lot of great uh, different topics that were covered here and we're going to be closing it up uh, with a big bang with uh, James Taylor. So keep an eye out on social. We're covering everything. Facebook, on uh, Twitter, on LinkedIn as well. Be sure to follow us there. And, and check uh, out Killer Content Awards report. It's a really cool interactive experience. Keyword yeah. there. Yep, and you it's get to live. see all that content. So and all the winners. Yeah. So I uh, hope everyone's having a good day, and hopefully we get to see you next year. All right. Awesome. Everybody have a good rest of the day. Later. Went pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty good. <laughs>